Good morning, afternoon, and or evening, fellow gamers. Today, I'll be talking about promotions I made for some characters in Pyro 101 that I really wished were in the game. But before we get into the video, roll the intro. Let's get started immediately with the first character I want to talk about being the Water Mole Slingman. And the reason I gave them a promotion was because I described their character design as a canvas that I was given up on. Basically meaning that he was pretty bland. And the uh, other Water Moles get pretty cool promotions and I really wish he got cool promotions too. So I wanted to give them a promotion, which turned out better than I thought it would. But it makes sense because being this basic allows a lot of changes to be done. I started updating their design when I realized the Water Mole sort of had an armor front arm and a weapon wielding back arm. So I doubled down on it by adding a shoulder pad which was based on normal shoulder pad onto his front arm. Then I gave them a bracelet and then added a paint design to their arms, mostly following a sharp and pointy motif which I put all over the slingman's body. I put a necklace on him and then added a pattern onto the outside of the water mold slinger? Which sounds pretty weird but it all meshed well together and looks fantastic. To end it off, I need to give them a new promoted name, which I clearly forgot to do since you can prove it through the erasure marks and the residue from the lead. And the blood in the top right corner's existence resulted through the difficulty of finding a pencil with a competent eraser. Sorry about that rant, I guess. I don't know, but let's move on to the next one being the Troggy Warrior, which actually does have a promotion, but it sucks. So I created another promotion for the Troggy. I first looked at the Troggy shield center design, and then made it into a chest plate alongside shoulder pads, and then added that swirl design onto those pieces of armor. Though the shoulder pad blocked the band on their arms, so I moved it lower down on their arms, and didn't touch the spear and shield because I feel like it's their unique quirk. Then I noticed how bare and boring their legs were, so I added a similar band on their arms onto their legs. Lastly, I like the headdress crown thing the Troggy High Chief has, and I put it onto the Troggy, but made the feather design on the skull more simpler than the one the High Chief has. And I gave them the title of Troggy Champion, since I based several bits of the Troggy on Cractus's armor, which is a Crab Champion. Next up, we have Oingo Boingo, our favorite first big boss that we completely forget about after a couple of levels. And the explanation of why I gave him a promotion was the same as the Troggy. Froggy Warrior, except this time, his promotion legitimately did nothing to change his design. So I made one myself, and it turned out great, unlike some I made that I won't be talking about, but will show, but let's go over the things I added. I added some feathers to his headband, face paint, more more shoulder pads, more feathers and beads to his necklace, feathered bear-like arm guards, belly paint, and normal shoulder pad like leg guards. Now the next companion I created was a promotion for Frago Vila, which I'd attempt to give an aquiline kind of vibe. I first started by giving him some forearm guards, swapped out his knife for a more aquiline looking knife, and didn't change anything with his gloves. Then I gave him some multi-layered shoulder pads, and moved on to his legs where I put leg guards, and added multi-layered leg plates, and kept his foot wrapping. Last, I moved on to his body area, where I made him open up his jacket revealing a banner design, but I later added in a layered chest plate because it seemed too empty, and I gave him the title of Salamander Assassin. The next companion I made a promotion for was Black Angus. His only promotion pretty much only added a hat to him, which made him look good but was still very basic. So I made him a design that is focused on his big upper body and powerful blades. I first gave him a good old cowboy hat and then changed his belt to have pouches and a fancy center and added pouches and strings to his coat too. Next, I put an extra band on both of his arms and gave him Marlebone-like shoulder pads, but I still gave him the same blades as before, which I kept for a bit of time. But I took a bit 
of time to consider how I could change the blades, and made them a bit more like Rapier's blades by giving him knuckle dusters and axe like blades. Then, a couple of days later, when I looked back at him, his legs distracted me and drew too much attention, so I adjusted some areas of his pants and added some strings to them. Now, I looked back up to his face and wanted to change his facial hair a bit since it didn't change during the promotion, and I finished him off by titling him a bison mercenary. For my sixth one, I gave the Lace Dragonian an actual promotion rather than just giving them horns. Seriously, who chose to give them that as their promotion? If you did that, you'd have the same amount of brain cells as the Lace Dragonian to create a promotion like that. Honestly. Sorry, let me cap my rage in a bottle and throw it away and focus on the drawing, which I majorly based it on, Burgess Latro's design. I started on the shoulder pads by making them very tube-like, and then gave them a basic chest plate, but then wondered what I could do for their wristband and belt. For these areas, I didn't want to have a base, so I thought a bit, and then made them into a band with rounded steel bumps on them, which looked great. Now for the helmet, which was the thing that made me want to use Burgess as a base because I could make it look both stupid and badass on the Lace Draconian by covering a bit of the eye, and I added a head crust to them too. Lastly, I made their horns have a design, which was the last thing I did. Well, not really, since the best part of the design, in my opinion, is their name, being the Lace Dragonian Annihilator, which just sounds amazing. Now, the next promotion I made is one for the Monquistador Sharpshooter, which I really wanted to make since the veteran got a really good promotion, and I wanted the Sharpshooter to also have one. So, I used the Monquistan Gear and the Monquistan Commander as a base to focus on. I began at the helmet because I believed it would be simple, and I changed the crest, added some paint details, and put the Monkeyston symbol on their helmet. Then I moved on to giving the monkey a cooler looking chest plate majorly based on the concept art for the Monkeyston armor, and then I gave him layered shoulder pads and a wit wrist Wait, wait, waist wristband. Lastly, I gave them armor boots over their originally strange boots and made their crossbow twistier and applied spikes onto it because if you put spikes onto anything, they look cool. Besides the Lagoonies, since they are flawless, so adding spikes onto them would make them flawed. Oh, hey, look what's cool now. The subscribe button because it has a spike on it. And also the like button because it too has a spike on it. How very epic, cool, grand, badass, and Homeric those buttons are. It's almost like you want to click on it. So why don't you? Oh, I almost forgot to talk about what I named this monkey. Because of how cool their spikes on their crossbow were, I wanted to give them a cool title, being the Monkey's to Door Sniper. Now, this next promotion will look a bit silly and cliche, but that's what it's meant to be. This character that I'm warning you about is the Wharf Rat Squirt, which becomes the Wharf Rat Newbie. He has everything a pirate needs! A hat, earring, eye patch, parrot, belt, and blade! What more does a pirate need? But seriously, I just wanted to take the childish association with the War of Red Sport to the next level by making them take everything a cliche pirate would have while adding extra small details like bands on his legs and gone blacks. Next on this list is the Shark Cannoneer, which I tried to give a bit of a Monkeyston vibe while still keeping old features in their gear. I didn't adjust the shark can use head in any way, but then I gave him giant body armor with giant shoulder pads with spikes. And you know what that means. It means they're Homeric. I added the poofy arm clothing, created pretty cool looking arm guards with steel bumps, and gave their cannon thing a more metallic look. The other things I added onto the shark was a belt design that turned out well, and leg guards both for the calf and thigh area, which is everything I did on the shark can near to make them into a shark blaster. Last of these companions I gave a promotion to was Finn Dorsal, our favorite first felon we fight, since all his promotion does is give him a shirt. Which means that right now, using that logic, I can be promoted and get a new epic. So I'm gonna put another shirt on real quickly because I wanna chain my opponents and not 
not be a disappointment like Monkey King. First thing I did was give Finn's bald head a bandana. Second, I gave him a chest plate with various designs and scratches similar to his chained arms. Next was layer shoulder pads, then a belt with cloth ends and a design in the center. And I changed his blades from being a boring design into a more fancy, clean design. Now, usually I give these promoted forms random titles, but this time I gave Finn the title of Cutthroat Enforcer, because in his Rogues Gallery newsletter, it says that he was a legendary enforcer that worked for Marlebone to capture Polarians. Also, because the title Cutthroat Enforcer sounds super Homeric, and hopefully this Homeric video made you, the viewer, happy, and also, roll the outro.